Hi everybody, my name is Mrs. Swinning. I'm the librarian at Martha Jones. Today I thought I'd read a story with you. We're learning all about maps in social studies right now. There's some great books on Epic. Hopefully you got a chance to listen to and follow along last week with some of the read to me's. So today I thought I would take a chance to read with you. We're gonna read this book that's right here in the middle. I searched maps. We're going to read this one called Mapping Our Nation. Mapping Our Nation. Let's go to the beginning of our book. The title of our book is Mapping Our Nation by Sandy Fawn. Readers learn about the different areas of the United States in this stimulating nonfiction title. Ooh, I like that word. It's stimulating. It sounds very exciting. We have our table of contents over here. Do you see it right there? There's our table of contents right there. I love tables of contents because they tell you what's inside the book without even turning any pages. It's amazing. In this book, we're going to see using maps, types of maps, regions, modern maps, one nation, make it. Ooh, we get to make something. And then our lovely glossary and index that are at the back of nonfiction books. And something that's called Your Turn. That sounds exciting, too. Let's explore. I bet when we turn the page, we're going to see this very first one, Using Maps, on page four. Let's see. Here we go. There it is. Ooh, look at that colorful map. Do you know what that map is of? What is this map showing? Do you know? Hmm. If you don't know, how could you find out? Do you know that when reading a nonfiction book, if there's a picture, an illustration, there is usually a caption, which is something that tells you what the picture is of. And if you look right there, look right there, see that green bubble? It says, this is a map of the United States. So it does. It tells us. Now, this is the whole United States. And over here, they show Alaska and Hawaii because they're not attached to the rest of the states. Do you know which state you live in? Can you tell me? Very good. We live in Massachusetts. We live in Massachusetts. That's our state. That's our state. Can you find it on the map? Do you know where Massachusetts is on the map? I'll give you a couple hints. It's very small. And on this map, it's colored kind of light, light brown. Or beige, if you want to say beige. And it's, I'll point to it. It's over here on this side. And it's got a little curly thing on the end. And it's right next to an ocean. Do you see it? I'm going to point to it. Watch. Ready? I'm going to point up here. And my arrow is going to take it away. There it is. There's Massachusetts. That's where we live. See this little curly cue? Oops. I flipped the page. That's Cape Cod, if you've ever visited Cape Cod. All right, are we ready to read the words using maps? It says, the United States is huge. It stretches from the Pacific Ocean, here's the Pacific Ocean over there, to the Atlantic Ocean over here. <clears throat> Which ocean are we next to? Do you remember? Here's Massachusetts. We're next to the Atlantic Ocean. It is made up of 50 states, 5-0, 50 states. Some of the states are larger than whole countries. We can use maps to learn about our nation. Maps help us see the shape of the land. Maps also show important places. Let's explore our nation. Maps help us see the shape. Look at this interesting shape we have. We have, it's not a square, is it? No got ragged coastlines and we're next to some water. Let's explore. Here we go. Next page. There are tools to help us read maps. That's good. 
the legend, ooh, a legend, or key, sometimes it's called a legend and sometimes it's called a key, explains the symbols, lines, and colors on a map. A compass rose shows the four directions, north, south, east, and west. Another tool is called a scale. It helps us measure distances <coughs> on a map. If you know how to use these tools, you can read any map. Let's take a closer look at these. A legend or a key, I believe we can zoom in. This is a legend or a key. So if we had mountains on our map, they might look like this. If we had rivers on our map, they might look like this. The compass rose has north, east, south, and west. So when you're looking at a map, north is usually up, south is usually down, east, and west. Some people remember north, east, south, west. They say never eat soggy waffles. That's a good way to remember. I like to eat. I like to say never eat slimy worms. Mm -mm. This is a scale, so it shows us on our map, if we measured from here to here, that would be 500 miles on this map. All right, let's scooch over and look at our map. So here's our map, and look, at there's all those things we just looked at. There's our legend, and our compass rose, and our scale. And look, we can even see, here's the mountains, like it says on our legend. And rivers are like squiggly blue lines. Oh, I see the Mississippi River. And there's the Rocky Mountains. This over here next to where Massachusetts is are the Appalachian Mountains. I even see something that they didn't talk about. Can anybody see that right there? Let's see if we can get a little closer. Let's see. Do you see that red star right there? And it has words next to it. It says Washington, D.C. Do you guys know what that is? That's our nation's capital. So our whole country has a capital city. It's called Washington, D.C. <clears throat> that was an interesting page. We learned a lot on that page, just that one page. Let's go to the next one. Here we go. Ready, everybody? Turn the page with me. Whoosh. Oop, I flipped two pages. Flipped two. You guys helped me too hard. Mapping our nation. Ooh, types of maps. Do you know there's different kinds of maps? Let's see what it says. There are many types of maps. Physical maps. Look how it's in bold. Physical maps. That must be an important word. They show water such as rivers and lakes. They also show land forms. Ooh, another important bold word. Land forms. These are natural features on the Earth's surface. Hmm. Mountains, deserts, and plains are land forms. We have this great picture to show us, and there's our little caption, our green bubble. It says, this is a physical map of the United States. <clears throat> Let's zoom in on that a little bit more. A physical map. Remember, physical maps show water such as rivers and lakes. They also show land forms, such as mountains, deserts, and plains. So let's go. Let's see. So I see, oh, I see our mountains. And here's the Appalachian Mountains that we saw in the last map. And it does show all these rivers. This one shows more rivers than the last one did. So it shows us rivers and lakes and mountains. Wow. You see all those different colors? Wonder why there's all those different colors. If I look at my key over here, and I can't get any for I can't get any closer unfortunately, but see how it has the same colors here as we see on the map? Okay? That shows us how tall things on this map are. So the light green which is right here next to the oceans. The light green is low, right? The blues shows the water. So the light green is the lowest part, the part right next to the ocean. And then as we get higher, 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 we see some like yellowish 
that land is a little higher. And then look at the browns. The browns is even higher. We see these, these mountains, these big, big mountains in brown. And when you get up to this purple part, look at this purple part. That's even higher. That must be a very tall mountain right there. Very interesting map. Let's zoom back out and see what's on the rest of this page. Ooh, elevation. That's another important bold word. And even tells us how to say it. L -a -v -a -t -i -o -n. Is the height of a place. Ooh, just like we were just looking at the mountains. A mountain has a higher elevation than a desert. Some physical maps show elevation, just like our map we were just looking at. Now see this picture in the background, right? We're interested in knowing what that is, too. And here's our little bubble right there. See it? It says, this is the Missouri River. It's one of those rivers that was on our map. And we even have a fun fact. Let's zoom in on our fun fact. Longest river. Ooh, the Missouri River is the longest river in the United States. Wow. It is two, look at this big long number, 2,540 miles long. It starts in Montana, it ends in Missouri, and there it joins the Mississippi River. Wow, that's a really long river. I wonder if it shows it on here. It says that the Missouri River starts up in Montana which is up here. Do you see the word Missouri right there in blue? And it goes all the way down, it says, until it meets the Mississippi River, which is right here. Very long river. Wow. And that's a picture of part of it. You guys ready to turn the page? Help me this time. Not too hard. Here we go. Whoosh. There we go. Mapping our nation. What is this? Another type of map. Ooh, another type of map. This looks very different from that other map, doesn't it? A political is a political map. There's our bold words again, political map. A political map shows the borders between places. It shows how people have split up the land. And here's our picture. And here's our caption in the green bubble up there. Colors on this old map show the borders between states. So we can see, i see all the different colors. Those are different states. This is the state of Kentucky. Let's see what else this page says. A political map of the United States shows the 50 states. Sometimes it shows their capitals too. So each, remember we had a capital of our whole country, but each state also has a capital. Each state is like a puzzle piece. These pieces form a picture of our nation. So here's another picture, and here's our green caption. This is a political map of the United States. Let's get a little closer. Whoop, we flipped the page again. Scooch it over. Capital cities. Each state has a capital city. This city is where the government <coughs> has main offices. Do you know your state's capital city? We live, do you remember what state we live in? We live in Massachusetts. Do you know what our state capital is? Our state capital. If we wanted to go to the big city, what city would we go to? Do you know what it's called? B the Red Sox play there. There you go, Boston is our capital city. And look at, do you remember what this is called? Mm, our compass rose, our compass rose. Never eat slimy worms, our compass rose. All right, let's go back next page. Wow, that's a very different map from this, isn't it? All right, here we go, ready? Turn the page. Whoosh. Ooh, a thematic map. Ooh, another kind of map in bold words. Shows how people or things are spread out over a place. It may show the number of people who live in an area. Hmm. <clears throat> and here's our picture and here's our caption. It says this is a thematic map. 
a theme. It shows where we get different kinds of foods. A thematic map may also show the food that is grown in an area. It may show the roads on which people travel to. This thematic map shows major roads in the United States. Ooh, let's look closer at these. This is a thematic map. The theme is, what do you think the theme of this map is? What do you think the theme is? It says it shows where we get different kinds of food because some states are better for different foods than others. So let's see if we can find it. Cattle. <coughs> do you know what we get from cattle? We might get, what do you think, meat and we might get milk from cattle. So here's some cows here, cattle here, and here. And way over here, there's those mountains again. There's the cows. Now, do you think these cows are just wandering all over the place, wherever they feel like? Where do you think cows live? Do you think they just wander through the mountains? Where do they live? Where would you find cows? On a farm, right? Same thing with chickens. Here we've got cattle and poultry. So chickens, we would get chi uh, meat and eggs. So here's some places that are good for chickens. We also have some places that are really good for growing corn. Right here in the middle. See how the middle is kind of this flat green color? Not very many mountains there. That's good for growing corn. Apples. <clears throat> Look at where we see the apples. The apples are kind of more towards the top of the map. That's interesting. And, oh, we skipped oranges. Where do you see oranges growing? Oranges are growing down here towards the bottom of the map. Hmm, that's an interesting question that comes up in my head. Why do you think apples are at the top of the map and oranges are at the bottom of the map? Hmm, hmm. should we answer that question? What do you think? Or should I let you figure it out later? I think I'll let you figure it out later. Maybe we'll come back to it. All right. This map. Oh, I changed the page again. Zoom in. This map over here <coughs> shows major roads. So not all the roads, but major roads, meaning the big roads, like highways um, and big roads that people take places. Look at all those roads. If you wanted to take a trip, you might need a map like this, right? All right, here we go. Ready to turn the page, everybody? One, two, three. Whoosh. Ooh, regions. A region. What is a region? A region is an area of land. It has its own features. These features set it apart from other areas around it. Hmm. Here's our picture. Here's our caption. There are the four, these are the four regions of the United States. Now, I'll give you a hint. Sometimes if you read different books about regions, it splits them up different. So in this book, they split the United States into four regions. <clears throat> the West, that way. The Midwest. The South and the Northeast. Do you remember where Massachusetts is? Do you know which region we live in? Hmm. Do you remember? I'll give you a second. Ready? One, two, three. The Northeast. We live in the Northeast. The purple part on this map. <clears throat> a region may have a certain climate. Ooh, there's another good, bold word to know. A climate or weather pattern. So weather is what happens during the day, but climate is kind of like what it's like year round. Or maybe a special type of animal lives in a region. Each region has its own unique traits. And when we see this picture, we see our caption up there. <clears throat> this is the Northeast region. Hey, that's where we live, the Northeast region. This is what it looks like here in the fall. Do you know that if you went to a different region, it might not look like that in the fall. 
So different regions are different. Let's see what this bubble, let's zoom in on this bubble and see what it says. It looks like a fun fact. Four regions. The United States can be split <clears throat> many different ways. One way is to split it into four regions. These four regions are the Northeast, the South, the Midwest, and the West. I just pointed in the wrong direction. The Northeast, let me try that again. The South, the Midwest, and the West. There we go. And we're going to zoom back out. And that's it for that page. Ready to flip? Here we go. Whoosh. <clears throat> Let's see. Ooh, the Northeast. They're going to tell us about our region, the Northeast. Here's the states. Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts. Hey, that's us. New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and Vermont. And here's the Appalachian Mountains. There's our picture and our caption. These are the Appalachian Mountains in the fall. The Northeast. There are nine states in the Northeast region. It has cold, snowy winters. Mm -hmm. It has hot summers. We're about there. The leaves turn beautiful colors in the fall. Yes, they do. And the spring brings rain showers, which we have had. New York City is another place in the Northeast region. The Northeast region is known for its Appalachian Mountains. Appalachian Mountains. These are some of the oldest mountains on Earth. Wow. And here's a fun fact about New York City. There's the, you guys know what that is? <clears throat> the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Big city, the largest city in the United States, is located in the Northeast region. It is New York City. Well, there you go. Ready to turn the page with me? Here we go. Whoosh. Ooh, the South is what we're going to explore next. There are 16 states in the South. Look at all of them. Most of the states in this region have warm climates. Some areas are always covered in water. Ooh, look at this picture. These are called swamps. Many swamps have alligators. Do you see the alligator in the swamp? Ooh, let's zoom in and see if we can see the alligator in the swamp. Do you see the alligator in the swamp? Do you see him? He looks like he's a good, good at hiding, good at camouflaging, but there he is. There's his head and his body. Very good. There's the alligator. They live in the south where it's warm. You know what that kind of reminds me? Do you remember that food picture and how some fruits grew <clears throat> in the south? Do you remember what fruit that was that grew where it's warm? Oranges. That's right, oranges. Maybe that's why oranges grow good there because it's warmer. There are large rivers in this region that help farmers grow crops. Cotton, rice, and citrus fruits. Ah, there's our oranges. All grow well in the south. And let's see, it says something about our nation's capital. Oh, I don't know what that is. Jim. Let's see. <clears throat> our nation's capital. Did you know that our nation's capital is in the south? Washington, D.C. is located on the Potomac River by Maryland and Virginia. And there's a picture of it. The Potomac River, in Washington, D.C. I've never been to Washington, D.C. Here we go. We're going to flip the page. The Midwest. There are 12 states in the Midwest region. The climate is mostly dry. Hmm. The Great Plains are in this region. This is a large, flat area of land. It is covered with grasses. Do you remember on the map of the food where we were showing how it was all green? And the, do you remember what food grows good there? Corn. That's right. The Great Lakes are also in this region. <clears throat> These freshwater lakes take up 94,000 square miles. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of lake. Many fish such as salmon and trout live in the lakes. So we have, look at all that flat grassy area in the background there. There's our caption. It says, these are the Great Plains. Let's see what this fun fact says. Out, out on the farm. 
The Midwest has many farms. These farms mainly grow crops such as wheat, oats, and corn, just like our other map showed us. Hmm, that was the Midwest region. I think we have one more to go. Do you remember which one it is? It's that way on the map. Let's see what it is. Here we go. Flip the page. The West. A large area <coughs> of land makes up the West. There are 13 states in this region. Their climates vary. Mm. Their climates vary. It means they're different. Their climate is different. Oregon is rainy and foggy. Colorado can be very cold. And Arizona can be very hot. So even though they're all in one region... You have a lot of different climates. <clears throat> there are deserts and beaches in the west. There are also mountains. There are glaciers in Alaska. And Hawaii has volcanoes. Oh my goodness. Glaciers. That's a bold word that we'll have to look up later. Glaciers. And we even have a picture. Here is a picture. And it says this. Let's zoom in. This glacier. This is a glacier in Alaska. What do you think this glacier is made out of? Hmm. It looks very cold there. I wonder if that glacier is made out of snow and ice. And then if we go over here, look at that. That's a river. It's a very high canyons. And our caption says this is the Grand Canyon. Oh, let's read a little bit more about it up here. Long ago, the Colorado River cut through an area of Arizona to create a deep valley. Today, this valley is called the Grand Canyon. It is over 270 miles long. Wow! <clears throat> Touch your nose if you've ever been to the Grand Canyon. Have you ever been there? I have not. Maybe someday. Ready to find the next page? We did all four regions. We started in the, where we live, the northeast, right? And then we went south, and then we went to the midwest, and then we went to the west. And now, oh, now we're going to look at modern maps. Maps have changed a lot over time. A book of maps, if you saw a book in the library full of maps, it's called an Atlas. Look, it's in bold. It's important. An atlas can help you learn more about an area. It has facts and pictures about different places. This is an atlas from 1879. That's a long time ago. <clears throat> Today, we can look at maps on computers. Some of these maps are interactive. This means that you can click on the maps to learn more about places in our nation. <clears throat> this, oh, let's zoom in on this. Oop. We'll flip the page again. Here we go. This woman is using Google Earth on a tablet. Google Earth is an interesting way to look at things. Let's see what it says. Images from space. Google Earth is a 3D interactive map of our planet. The map is made from pictures taken by machines in space called satellites. Google Earth has pictures, videos, and other great tools to help you learn. Google Earth is amazing. If you get your parents' permission, you can explore the whole globe on Google Earth. Old maps, flat and printed on paper, and new maps, digital and interactive. Wow. We still have a couple more pages to go. Let's see what's next. One Nation. Maps of the United States are important. Maps show the landforms on which we live. They show rivers and lakes that help us grow food. They show the roads on which we travel. Maps show us how and why each region is different, but they also show us how these regions are all a part of one nation. <clears throat> so we've got volcanoes in Hawaii. We've got the beautiful Rocky Mountains in Colorado. There's Boston Harbor in Massachusetts. And this is... Um, West Quaddy Head Lighthouse in Maine. All sorts of interesting things in our nation. Ooh, here's something we get to make. <clears throat> you can make maps too. Make a map of the United States. It can be any kind of map. 
It could show where sports teams play, ooh, or where your family members live. Share your map with your friends. This boy is making a map that shows all the places his family members live. This girl is making a map that shows the states she has visited. This is her map when she's done. Nice. How about in the uh, directions below, I will put a map of the United States for you to color and label however you think you want to show. Let's see. <clears throat> Our glossary. Oh, look, there's all those bold words that we saw in the text. And then if we wanted to go back and look at something again, the index puts them in A, B, C order. And we could go back and see if we wanted to go back and look at the page of the Northeast where we live, we would go to back to page 15. And there's our glossary. Ooh, let's look up. Remember we were talking about glaciers and wondering what those were. Let's see what it says. Glaciers are very large pieces of ice. <clears throat> that moves slowly over a wide area of land. Huh. There we go. Let's go one more page. I think there's more. <gasps> Your turn. Yay. Here you are here. This is a political map of the United States. It shows all 50 states and their capitals. In which state do you live? Do you remember which state we live? And what region is it a part of? List two features of that region. Do you remember two special things of our region? Do you remember what region we were? Let's remember our region. Remember when they split the map into four different colors? Our region was the north east. We're in the northeast region. And what state do we live in? We live in the state of Massachusetts, yes. Do you, and what a town do we live in? We live in Westwood. Very good. So all sorts of things we could put on our map. Good job, everybody. Oh, it says we're almost done. Let's turn the page. Ta-da! We're finished with this book. Good job, everybody. Hope to see you soon. I'd love to see the maps that you make. Bye!